okay now for the differential like I said I'm not going to take the whole thing apart I'm just going to pump some grease out of there as good as I can Pretty major part of your transmission here. A lot of stress on these parts right in here. It would have been best to take it apart and clean it real good, but uh, this is uh, this will work pretty good, I think. If I was doing a complete rebuild, I would definitely would uh, take it all apart. I call this a basic rebuild. Take a screwdriver here and you can feel the gears and just try to try to work the wind as good as you can. And making sure the grease is actually doing something. Uh, yeah, it's working in there real good now. Real okay, I got the four bearings lined up approximately where they're at on the, on the axles here. I'm referring to these here, this one, this one. This one is part number 23. And I'm referring to this one here with the flange is part number 25. Like I said earlier, I'll have a parts list here at the video at some point. It has all the numbers I'm referring to these as with the actual MTD part numbers on here. And I'll give the model number of the transmission here too for uh, reference. And you also have an oil seal here when it goes on the end to keep water and dirt from getting in and the grease from going out. Same for both sides right here. Okay, I don't know how well you can read this, but it says MTD 717-761. That's the transmission part number. But in the book, it says single speed transaxle right hand model 717-1050. So there's your two model numbers for the same thing. <laughs> And this is the short side. And this one has a flange that goes here up against this gear. The flange, you see there's a couple washers on here too. The book shows three washers. This looks like it has one thick one instead of three small ones. And this one goes over here where your uh, main wires on these on the outside. And you have a seal that goes on here. I'm just going to show you one side here to cut the video length down. But uh, basically you just want to grease this real good. Slide this on. Get started here. Had it on the road. You should clean your shaft a little bit here with sandpaper. It'll make this a lot easier. A little bit of grease all over here. That'll help you slide it in. Okay, I finally got it on there. What it was, uh, had a little edge on there. I had to sand it down and I ended up cleaning the shaft a little bit. So now, I'm going to put this on here. Just doing this to make sure the grease gets worked in real good there. And I'm going to do the same thing down here with the bearing rods. If you hold up to the casing here where you you can see where the gear rides. You can see this one bearing rides in here and it's got little grooves in there to hold it when it clamps down. And the other one's about right here. So we'll go ahead and grease this real good. Good enough. Just 
We'll slide that on. Spinning it again. You may not have to do that. I just that's the way I do things like this, just to make sure the grease gets worked in there. Just kind of move it around. You can you can feel it getting in between it, and you know it's in there real good. Okay, here's your seal. It's gonna go on the same as the bearing did. Probably want to turn it a little bit too, because you don't want a dry seal. If you have a dry seal, then uh, it's gonna get hot from the friction of the steel on that rubber. It'll get hot and burn up and it'll defeat the whole purpose. And these weren't very cheap either for this. Uh, okay, this side's ready to go back in, but uh, I'll go ahead and put the bearings on this side. It's the same as this. I'm just trying to save you all a few minutes from the video here. Uh, it's the exact same thing as this, except you have two you have two plain ones instead of a flange here, and it goes on there like this. And you have a washer, it goes on here. Okay, I got this side ready. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in place. I'm going to have to move some bearings here in a minute just to make sure everything lines up in it. I'm get this one off too far. Right there. This one. Slide that down. And that. Make sure everything goes in place smooth. Yeah, this bearing here is spinning. By the time you get the case in there, it'll be solid like that. You can tell it's turning really free. It feels really smooth too. You don't feel no grinding or nothing in there. Very smooth. So now we're going to get ready to put this back in here. In the brake here, you want to use a clean screwdriver. Make sure the uh, Pads are spread apart. Just like that. The way you put your disc in there, it won't hit nothing. Now, have you noticed these? Uh, I ain't got no grease on these gears yet. I'm gonna wait till I get it all in here to put the grease on there. The way it'd be a little less messy. Let's just get it in here. Like this. The trickiest part is getting that uh, brake disc to get in there right. It's probably hanging up right now. Keep hitting that brake disc. Probably easier just to remove the caliber and put it all back on. I'm just trying to trying to save some time, but it ain't really working out. <laughs> okay, I finally got it in there. I'm gonna make sure everything's working all right. Now I'm going to go ahead and grease this right here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it off camera. I'm just going to hold the grease gun here. I'm going to turn it like this while I'm keep pumping the grease gun. The way it gets in here real even like this. Now on second pump, that didn't work out too easy. I'm just going to do it by hand like this. You lift your fingers and you just pinch it up. This is uh, really hurtful. This guy's supposed to hold good on anything like this. It's highly recommended for gears and bearings, wheel bearings, anything. And right before I put, put the lid back down, well, I'm going to cover everything real good with grease. The way it's on there is real good. And down the shaft here in between the bearings, even though it ain't quite necessary, it just won't come in contact with anything. I'm going to put this little dab on both sides of that, just in case you get a wear or something here, and uh, the gives they won't start cutting into the metal here. Besides that, that's the way MTD had it from the factory, so I'm going to try to do that for the factory spec as much as possible. Okay guys, I ended up pumping the whole tube of the grease in there just for uh, precautionary. It's good to have more than enough than not enough. I hear uh, people who build racing lawnmowers do this. They always pack it up as much as they can with grease. Now even half an hour after running, a lot of this grease is just going to sling back off. But uh, it's on there. It's inside the teeth as you can see. That's real important getting it down there so that uh, you never actually have metal on metal inside it. So that's real important. 
and uh, might want to watch this. You see, I got grease down here on the on the brake disc. You might want to watch that. Okay, remember that little ball? What I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and put it in the middle slot on that in your selector here. And they get see it's got grease in there, so that grease will help it stick. I'm going to raise this up so it's all level. And just very carefully set it down there. I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod and I'll uh, do that. And I'm going to put maybe two or three bolts in it. I'm going to check and make sure this is shifting right. And if it's not, then I'll have to keep playing with it, trying to get it in place. Okay, here we go. So I got some grease on there. It looks like that because I was spinning around like this. Now, uh, this is in neutral. I'm going to get the ball in here. I hope that holds its own. I hear that's a pain. You see, some of them have a screw right here that you can take out. Also, don't forget there's a spring down in there, too. So just take the time, though, and it should be all right. Just hope for the best, right? Got something in a bind here. I'm going to take a look and see what's going on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a Put a couple bolts in here just try to keep even pressure on I think that's what the problem is, just not going down evenly. And I'm going to find the right bolts. These bolts are 3 H drive, by the way. And I'm not forcing it, I'm just trying to get even pressure on there because uh, the new bearings got a seat pull into the housing. So we're just snugging it up a little bit to put a little pressure on it. You don't want to force nothing right out there. You can crack the housing very easy. It's just a aluminum housing, all this is. I think it's just being stubborn there. Listen. Okay guys, I took it back apart and put it back down there. The ball didn't have no problem with the ball at all. I don't know what it was, but something must have got out of a bind or uh, the case bent just a little bit or something. It's working fine now. Uh, no problems at all. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the bolts in. I don't know what the torque specs is, so don't go crazy with it. Just uh, snug them all pretty good. Pay attention to how they are when you take it loose. It'll give you a good idea of how uh, tight they're supposed to be. I did originally plan on putting some uh, gasket maker around the uh, edge here because they don't have no gasket or nothing. I thought it would be a good idea to do that, but I changed my mind there because uh, as tight as it seals around there and as thin as the metal is around there, you can't really get a good seal anyway, so uh, I think it would be good enough like it is, and that's what they do from the factory anyway, so it should be good. Also, another note to uh, bring up, on the video I seen on YouTube with somebody doing it on a five-speed. There's a bolt, I think it's somewhere here in the middle, it goes through and there's a nut on the bottom. So you might want to watch for that because uh, it would be bad to have one bolt holding it and you start prying it thinking something's jammed and you end up cracking the housing because you missed one bolt. So keep an eye on that. All these are different. This one just happened to have a traditional keyway here. But, uh, I've seen those splines before on these and uh, sometimes they have like a like the it's round, it's got two square spots on it. It just depends. I took it off with an impact earlier, but I'm not going to get it quite that tight. I'm just going to hold it and get it tight with the wrench. And this particular one is three quarter. That's going to get pretty tight. It'll tighten up on its own to a certain extent after it comes to anyway. 
something like this would be good to have two people have somebody hold it while you tighten it. You get pretty good leverage on it. You can see it's spinning pretty free. Okay, now you're probably wondering if this fixed the problem with the play in the shaft. Yeah, it did. Look at that, solid as can be. Just a little tiny bit of play. You always have a little bit on something used like this because the uh, shaft wears too. Let me flip it around and I'll show you the other side. That was really worn out. Here's the other side. I just can be. You'll have a little bit of end to end play like that. That's no big deal. So this is almost like a brand new transmission now. Well guys, that's uh, really about it. I'm going to try it out here after a while and see what it's going to do. So, uh, thanks for watching guys. If you got any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. I'm no expert on these transmissions. Uh, I've never worked on a differential part of the cells. So, uh, all I can tell you about the boots you on there. And, uh, so, well guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you all in my next video. See you later.